when I was a little kid, my house was full with computers, since my father was a computer engineer before most of my friends even knew what a computer is. I imagined a world filled with computer and powerful robots and droids helping us do great things. I was about eight years old when Terminator 2 came out to the screens, and I was, an am I was amazed and frightened by the idea that computers, droids, robots can turn against us. But the truth is that this idea of a droid that does things we tell him and the possibility that something can get wrong exists in Jewish tradition for centuries. A famous legend for 14th century tells a story about the great Rabbi Yehuda Leva, the Maharal from Prague, that when his community was under hostility, by using the books of the Kabbalah, he built a droid out of clay. He wrote the name of God on a piece of paper and put it in the droid's mouth. That was his source of energy. He then wrote three letters on the droid's forehead, Aleph, Mem, Taf, Emet, Truth, in Hebrew. That was his software. Then he stood up on his legs and was ready for duty. He named it Golem, if you heard the name. He served the community fearlessly, helped them in many ways, but there was one thing. Every Saturday, he had to be deactivated, to put him to sleep. One night, one Saturday, Rabbi Yudaliva forgot to turn him off, and he got out of control. He walked in the city, ruined things. It was very dangerous. So people ran to the Maharal, to Rabbi Yudaliva, and called him. So we ran to the golem, deactivated him for one last time. And some say that his remains are still in the Prague synagogue attic. But there is another human fantasy about how to use um, technology or knowledge, and not only to create external beings, but also to empower ourselves. For example, if you look at Batman or Iron Man, Iron Man has a suit that makes him more powerful, faster, he can fly. He is more efficient, but it is his brain and body behind it. For the first time in history, maybe, we have now the powers to create those technologies. But have we put any thought about the right usage of this knowledge? Where should we use droids or robots? And where should we empower ourselves? We at Impress, studying human-machine interactions for some time, and three years ago, we identified that car companies are struggling to create a driving experience that would be worth rich and distraction-free. However, infotainment systems are putting the life of the drivers at risk since they, can, since they can be looking at the road and the screen at the same time. About 25 to 50 percent of car accidents are related to driver distractions. That include the infotainment systems. So many companies went to the direction of using voice control and artificial intelligence in order to solve that problem. Let's take a look at that. It's morning, and Brian gets into his car. He tells the system, hi, Kiri, turn on the music. The music starts with his favorite playlist. It's great. He's happy. Now he wants to tell the system to navigate to work. But since the music is on, the system doesn't identify him correctly. So he has to press the button to turn on off the music. But he doesn't want to do that because that's his favorite song. So he decides to wait until the song will be over. The problem is he doesn't know that today there are repairs in the neighborhood. So it's, he gets into a huge traffic jam that if he would have uh, used the navigation app, he would have passed. So now he's annoyed and he's upset and there's a lot of uh, noise outside, and he needs to call his uh, boss, Angela, to tell her that he's running late. So he tells the, the system, Kiri, call Angela. But since he's upset and he's talking not so clearly and there is noise from outside, the system hears Angela. Sorry, the system hears Andrea, which is his mother-in-law, who is waiting to hear if he and his wife are coming to New Year's Eve and says they haven't decided yet 
This is the last call he's interested in making right now. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so finally, he gets out of the traffic jam and he's on the highway, and everything seems to be fine. So he tells the system, put on some classical music. So the system asks back, how about Mozart? So he said, Mozart is great. So the music starts, and suddenly the car is jumping, and he feels that he has a flat tire. So he pulls over and looks back and sees a huge pit on the road. How did I see it, he asks himself. So what's happening? When we give orders to the machine, our brain is partially shutting down to concentrate on the talk and the conversation. Our frontal, frontal lobe, which is in charge of analyzing situation, planning, it doesn't work so well in that case. Uh, University of Utah, together with AAA, studied driver cognitive distraction, which is this situation that the mind is concentrated in other stuff. And they found that after you complete the command, it takes 27 seconds to gain full concentration back on the road. Basically, what it means that when you're giving orders to the machine, you're actually transferring your own abilities to the machine, and you're not really effective for the time that you gave the order plus 27 seconds. Unless the machine is highly more effective than you, altogether you're losing. So why does it seem that all companies are going to the direction of using voice control and artificial intel intelligence in cars? One, false idea of how to decrease distraction. Second, the fantasy of a golem, of a personal helper, is always there. But is there a way to use the second idea, second technology, philosophy, the Iron Man idea in the car or in technology altogether? Can we control to technology without causing ourselves cognitive distraction? Think about the drive itself. Can you steer the wheel and solve a math problem in, in parallel? Can you press the gas and the brake and sing a song? Of course you can do that, because you have muscle memory. Muscle memory is being built whenever you're doing physical actions. You're repeating them over and over. The brain stores them in the back of the brain, a place called cerebellum. And in that case, the front side of the brain can work in parallel. That's the only real way of multitasking. If you have um, muscle memory and you're using the brain for other stuff. In Empress, in the past years, we're working to create um, human-machine interaction that will enable control on the car, infotainment system, and other stuff through this idea. So we were using the help of blind people. We told them to put their, ha their hands on tablets, and since they were, weren't fixated to the uh, graphic interfaces, we were able to analyze the natural movements of the fingers. We created algorithms that follow the fingers, and then we assign every finger a different role. So, like music instruments, you're using different fingers for different commands in the car. So I have a finger for radio, finger for navigation, finger for phone. Now, if you think about our friend Brian from before, so instead of talking to the machine, or instead of looking at the screen and touching specific places, by using a sightless touch, which is the name of our technology. Hello, he, Brian. Your preferences were loaded successfully. Please place three fingers on the screen. He can select his favorite music. Ready. Or call his boss, Angela. Calling to Angela. Or navigate to work. Navigate to office. Without looking at the screen and without thinking too much. Let's take West Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> Sightless Touch is a software-based solution. We install it on devices, and I'm happy to tell you that we are um, now closing a deal with a device manufacturer and in the next few months, we will start to ship worldwide. So hopefully in a few years, you will have it in your cars as well. And if you're fast, 
Maybe you will buy in the aftermarket beforehand. <laughs> but I want to say something. You know, we humans, we have a lot of potential in our brain and body. And before we hand everything to the machines, to the robots, maybe we should stop for a second and think. Maybe th some things should stay in our control. Some things should, should stay in our hands and fingers. Before you give up on humans, maybe we can all be a little bit of Iron Man and women. Thank you very much. <laughs>